Hello, uh, I'm very happy to have today with me uh, Max Deryagin and Professor Agnieszka Sharkowska, who agreed to also participate in this uh, interview. Uh, we're meeting with Max to bring more spotlight to subtitlers, and we have uh, been lucky to be able to get a celebrity subtitler. Uh, Max is actually a vice president of AVTE, a European association uh, that we can perhaps explore a little bit more during the interview. Uh, he's also the chair of the British Subtitles Association, SATO. He's a very experienced and well-known subtitler. His working languages include Russian and English. Max, it's great to have you here with us. Thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me. And um, as we want to bring more visibility and more spotlight to subtitles, perhaps you can, we can start with your career as a subtitler. Uh, do you rem remember how you first started in this industry? Mm. Well, I started in 2010. And when I started, I first of all didn't have any education in translation or linguistics. Uh, I, and it was much easier. Back in the day, as far as freelancing, it was a relatively new thing and there was much less competition. And all you had to do to get a client is, you know, just register on a freelance platform and uh, answer in a cover, cover letter to a prospect. Hey, I can do your project in like three days and for this amount of money. And quite often I would just get the yes. Uh, so it was different. And I started out as a generalist translator, and I, I, I just translated everything that my hands could get on. And that included, you know, website articles, comic books, newspapers, books even sometimes, YouTube videos, and I even translated video games, a few of them. And then at some point, I decided, actually didn't decide i read somewhere that if you want to go far in your career as a translator you need to specialize because there are too many generalists and so for me the choice was between uh video games because i'm a gamer i've played games all my entire life it's it's a natural choice and also subtitling uh, which by that time i have done uh, a little bit and i just liked it a lot but I decided to um, do subtitling in the end because video games, you see, when you translate them, you don't get to see the game, let alone play it, usually. And also, there is a lot of ambiguity. I remember I would get like a huge Excel file with thousands of lines. And uh, in some cases, you know, what that is for maybe a dialogue line or a location name or something and in other cases you have no idea so imagine you just have this word set and well, what is that is that a noun is that a verb if, if it's a noun what kind of set is it so what how do you translate that so i had to talk to the project manager and create lists of these ambiguous things so that they talk to some someone in the development team and it just, I didn't like it. It's a lot of admin. Whereas in subtitling, you have the video, you can see it, there is interactivity in that. And so it's more fun. So I decided to do subtitling then. And uh, I still did generalist stuff, but I just started leaning more heavier, heavier on subtitling. 